Hi everyone, this is Dauber speaking and in this class I'm going to apply the backward-forward sweep method in a very simple example to illustrate the idea of the method and uh, we will consider uh, numbers to so the impedance, loads, generation and you will see that the method is general and can be used for uh, different situations. So here in this system we have the, the, the border of the system. Here is the, the node where we want to obtain the, the power flow. Here we have the main grid or the transmission system and here we have the distribution system okay in the distribution system we have the node 2 with one generation and one load and we have the the node 3 with one load here in this side we have the data of the systems impedance from bus 1 to bus 2 impedance from bus 2 to bus 3 this is the the load the active and reactive part of the load this is the generation note that we don't have we don't have the the, the reactive part of the generator but we we can put it if you want uh, and the node 3 with the active and reactive part of the load okay so let's apply the the backward forward method so the idea to apply the method and and we as i told you we can generalize the method uh, by using generators or loads in the system but to do that we need to compute the net value of the uh, of the injection or extraction in each node of the system and for the case of the bus 2 we compute the net value by subtracting the the load for the generation so we have 1.28 minus 2 and the result is minus uh, 0 0.72 it means that we have an extraction of this system of minus 0 0.72 or in other words we have an injection of 0 0.72 okay and 1.28 minus 0 is 1.28 so we have this net value for the bus 2 for the bus 3 this is the same value of the data of the set of the data so starting the the, the method the backward forward uh, method we started by the backward sweep which means we are going to the last bus to the first bus uh, the counter should be equal to zero at the first iteration and then and then we have we we initiate the voltage at the bus two and three equal to one why uh, we, we, we need to initiate equal to 1 because we, we have the, 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 the substation equal to 1 this is the voltage at the substation so one common rule is to use the same value of the voltage at the substation observe that we are at the iter iteration 0 so in order to compute the value of the voltage for the first iteration 
we uh, do k equal to k plus 1. So now we are at the iteration 1. And then we compute the current by using the voltage of the previous iteration, which means the iteration 0. And note that in this case, it doesn't matter if we compute first the current at the node 2 or 3. We can compute first 2 and then 3, or first 3 and then 2. Okay? And this is the result of the current in each node. So the next step, still in the backward sweep, we need to compute the current through the lines. So the first current that should be calculated is the current from the bus 2 to the bus 3. And why do we need to compute this uh, current first? Because to compute the current from the bus 1 to 2, we need the current through the line 2, 3. Okay? So the current from 2 to 3 is the same uh, has the same value of the current at the node 3 and then the current from 1 to 2 is the sum of the current at the node 1 2 and the and uh, the line 2 3 okay so now we finish the backward sweep we need to start the forward sweep and how can we do this? We start by the substation. We have the voltage at the substation and we can compute the drop voltage in this line, uh, multiplying the current by the impedance. So the voltage at the substation is one and with the, the, the drop voltage in the line uh, one, two, we can compute the voltage at the bus 2 for the first iteration and with the voltage at the bus 2 and with the drop voltage uh, at, uh, in the line 2-3 uh, computed by the current 2-3 multiplied by the impedance 2-3 we, we can compute the voltage at the bus 3 so now we have the voltage and the current in each node of the system in the same iteration. The next step is to observe the mismatch of power, the difference between the power computed and the actual power in each node. So computing the power at the node 2 and 3 and comparing the active and reactive part of each node with the active and reactive actual power, we obtained these values. And for the, the, this specific case, we can see that we can see that these values are greater in absolute, in absolute value than the tolerance that we, we have assumed initially so it means that the process should continue until we reach the tolerance for all nodes of the system so the conclusion here is that we 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 didn't achieve the convergence we need to continue the process and how can we continue the process we need to go back to the step two in the step two we need to compute the current for the next iteration, you see, next iteration, by using the voltage in the previous iteration. And then we compute the current through the lines. And finally, we compute the voltage at the bus 2 and bus 3. Okay, this is wrong. No, this is correct. 2 and 2. So now we need to, to to test and see if the, the, the power injection injected in each node computed and the actual are similar or 
the difference between them is smaller than the tolerance. So this is the the, the power computed for the, the, the node 2 and 3. And when we compare the active and reactive part between the actual and the computed power, we have these values. And now for all nodes, for all nodes and for the active and reactive part in each node, we achieved uh, the tolerance. We achieved the tolerance. It means that that the voltage computed at the bus, uh, the voltage computed in this iteration is the solution of the problem. Okay? The voltage at the bus 2 and the voltage at the bus 3. As we have the voltage and we have the current, we can compute the, the losses by multiplying the resistance of each line by its uh, the, by the square of the current in each line and then we have the value in per unit and if we have and if you want to have the value in, in megawatts we need to multiply it by the base which is 10 uh, MVA okay this is a, a, a very simple uh, system but as you can see, it's, it's useful to illustrate the method and we will use it to apply in a, in a more realistic system in, in our activity. See you in the next class. Bye.